Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Celestial Chronicles, where we dive deep into the mysteries and secrets of the universe, uncovering hidden truths and challenging mainstream narratives. Today, we have an intriguing and highly controversial topic to discuss, the connections between Allah, Satan, Baal worship, and the Antichrist. This video will explore various theories, historical contexts, and religious texts to understand these connections, asterisk asterisk. Before we dive in, make sure to hit the subscribe button and join our community. We love hearing your thoughts and engaging in discussions, so don't hesitate to leave comments and share your perspectives. Let's get started, asterisk asterisk. The Origins of Allah First, let's begin by exploring the origins of Allah. Allah is the Arabic word for God and is central to Islamic belief. Muslims believe that Allah is the one true God, the creator of the universe, and the same deity worshipped in Christianity and Judaism. However, some theories suggest that the origins of Allah might be more complex. Did you know that the name Allah was used in pre-Islamic Arabia? The Kaaba in Mecca, now the holiest site in Islam, was originally a polytheistic shrine containing many idols, including a deity called Allah. Is it possible that the pre-Islamic Allah was a different entity? This leads us to explore further connections. The ancient Near East, a cradle of civilizations, was a melting pot of various cultures and religions. Among these, the worship of Baal held a prominent place, particularly in Canaanite religion. The term Baal translates to Lord or Master, reflecting the deity's high status in the pantheon. Baal was often associated with different gods across various cultures, underscoring the fluidity and interchangeability of deities in ancient times. In many of these cultures, Baal was depicted as a storm god, embodying the life-giving forces of rain and fertility, which were essential for survival in the ancient Near East. The worship of Baal was characterized by various rituals and sacrifices, reflecting the deep reverence and fear associated with this powerful deity. The parallels between Baal and pre-Islamic deities, including Allah, have been a subject of scholarly interest. Some theories suggest that the deity worshipped in the Kaaba, a sacred site in Mecca, evolved over time and eventually became identified with Allah of Islam. This transformation echoes the broader shift from polytheism to monotheism that occurred in the Arabian Peninsula with the advent of Islam. When we compare Baal and Allah, it's important to consider their attributes and the rituals associated with their worship. Baal, as a storm god, was believed to control rain, thunder, and lightning, and his favor was associated with bountiful harvests. On the other hand, Allah, as depicted in Islam, is considered the one and only God, the creator of the universe, and the giver of life. The rituals associated with the worship of Baal and Allah also show some differences. While the worship of Baal involved various rituals and sacrifices, the worship of Allah in Islam is characterized by practices such as prayer, salat, fasting, psalm, almsgiving, zakat, and pilgrimage, hajj. In conclusion, while there are some parallels between Baal and pre-Islamic deities, including Allah, these connections should be understood within the broader context of cultural and religious evolution in the ancient Near East and the Arabian Peninsula. The transformation of religious beliefs and practices over time is a complex process, influenced by a myriad of factors including social, political, and environmental changes. As we continue to explore these fascinating topics, it's important to approach them with an open mind and a deep appreciation for the richness and diversity of human religious experience. The concept of Satan. Next, let's delve into the concept of Satan. In Christianity and Islam, Satan is seen as a fallen angel or jinn who opposes God. The term Satan comes from a Hebrew word meaning adversary. In Islamic tradition, Iblis is the equivalent of Satan, a jinn who refused to bow to Adam and was cast out of heaven. However, some theories propose that Satan might not just be a singular entity but could represent a broader idea of opposition to divine order. Could the association of Allah with Satan be a misunderstanding or misinterpretation of these ancient texts and beliefs? The relationship between Allah and the Antichrist, as well as the parallels between Christian and Islamic eschatology, indeed present a fascinating topic. In Christian eschatology, the Antichrist is a figure prophesied to emerge before the end of the world. This figure is depicted as a powerful entity that opposes Christ, leading many people astray with false teachings and deceptive miracles. In Islamic eschatology, a comparable figure exists, known as the Dajjal. The Dajjal, whose name translates to the deceiver in Arabic, is portrayed as a false messianic figure who will appear before the Day of Judgment. He is described as a plump, 
one-eyed man with a ruddy face and curling hair, and the Arabic letters KFR, meaning unbelief, on his forehead. The Dajjal is expected to perform false miracles and deceive many people, including Jews, who will follow him. There are theories suggesting that certain elements within Islam could be linked to the concept of the Antichrist. These theories often stem from interpretations of religious texts and doctrines, which may be influenced by various cultural and historical contexts. However, it's important to note that these are interpretations and not universally accepted views. As for what the Quran says about these figures, it's interesting to note that the term Dajjal is not explicitly mentioned in the Quran. The teachings about the Dajjal primarily come from the Hadith, the sayings and actions of the Prophet Muhammad. On the other hand, the term Antichrist appears multiple times in the New Testament of the Bible, specifically in the first and second epistle of John. Comparatively, both the Antichrist and the Dajjal are depicted as deceivers who will lead people away from the truth. They both perform false miracles and claim divine status. However, their ultimate fate is the same in both religions, they will be defeated in the end times. While there are similarities between the concepts of the Antichrist and the Dajjal in Christian and Islamic eschatology respectively, the interpretations and beliefs surrounding these figures can vary widely. These interpretations are often influenced by a multitude of factors, including cultural and historical contexts. As such, it's crucial to approach this topic with an open mind and a respectful understanding of these diverse perspectives. The concept of overwhelming evidence is indeed a significant one when it comes to examining religious texts and historical records. It's important to remember that these documents are often open to interpretation and can be understood in various ways depending on the reader's perspective, cultural background, and personal beliefs. When we delve into theories that attempt to connect Allah with entities such as Satan, Baal, or the Antichrist, we find ourselves navigating a complex web of interpretations and conjectures. These theories often hinge on selective readings of religious texts and historical sources. For instance, some theories suggest that Allah, as depicted in the Quran, shares certain characteristics with Satan as described in the Bible, such as deception and temptation. Others propose that the Arabic name for Allah bears resemblance to the Greek number 666, which is associated with the mark of Satan. There are also theories that link Allah to Baal worship, a form of idolatry prevalent in ancient Mesopotamia. These theories often point to the use of the crescent moon symbol in Islam and the fact that Baal was sometimes represented as a moon deity. However, it's crucial to note that these theories are often based on selective interpretations of the sources. They may overlook or downplay aspects of these texts that do not support their hypotheses. For example, the Quran explicitly rejects idolatry and affirms the oneness of Allah, which contradicts the idea of Allah being linked to Baal worship. Moreover, these theories often fail to take into account the historical and cultural contexts in which these religious texts were written. Interpretations of religious texts can be heavily influenced by the time, place, and culture in which they were produced. Therefore, it's essential to approach these theories with a critical eye and a deep understanding of the complexities involved in interpreting religious texts and historical records. While it's possible to find connections between different religious figures and concepts when we look hard enough, it's important to remember that these connections are often based on selective readings and interpretations. As such, they should be approached with caution and a healthy dose of skepticism. It's always important to consider the broader context and to respect the diversity and richness of religious traditions. For example, some point to the violent passages in the Quran to argue that Allah is a malevolent deity. However, similar passages can be found in the Bible and other religious texts. How do we reconcile these interpretations with the broader messages of peace and compassion found in these scriptures? Can we find a consistent narrative that supports these claims, or are we seeing patterns where none exist? The historical context and evolution of beliefs indeed play a crucial role in understanding the development of religions and deities. Over time, religions have evolved, often absorbing elements from different cultures and traditions. This process is not only fascinating but also complex, as it involves significant shifts in how people perceive and worship their gods. One such significant shift was the transition from polytheism to monotheism in the ancient Near East. This transition was not a simple overnight change but a gradual process that involved considerable alterations in religious practices and societal norms. Now, let's delve into the intriguing connections between Allah, Baal, and other deities. Some theories suggest that these connections could be a result of cultural and religious evolution. For instance, it has been proposed that Allah, 
as worshipped in Islam, shares certain characteristics with Baal, a deity, venerated in ancient Mesopotamia. These theories often hinge on interpretations of religious texts and historical sources, which can be influenced by various cultural and historical contexts. However, it's important to note that these are theories and interpretations, and they may not necessarily reflect the core teachings of Islam. Early Islamic teachings distinguished themselves from the pre-existing beliefs in the region in several ways. For instance, while pre-Islamic Arabia was characterized by a mix of polytheistic, Christian, Jewish, and other beliefs, Islam introduced a strong emphasis on monotheism. The Quran, the holy book of Islam, explicitly rejects idolatry and affirms the oneness of Allah. Understanding these dynamics can indeed provide a clearer picture of how these connections might have formed. However, it's crucial to approach this topic with an open mind and a deep understanding of the complexities involved in interpreting religious texts and historical records. Now, I would like to invite you, our viewers, to join this discussion. What are your thoughts on the connections between Allah, Satan, Baal worship, and the Antichrist? Do you find the evidence compelling, or do you believe it's a case of selective reading and interpretation? Have you encountered other theories that might support or challenge these claims? Your insights and perspectives are valuable in enriching this conversation. Please share your thoughts in the comments below, and let's engage in a thoughtful and respectful discussion. In wrapping up, the intricate connections between Allah, Satan, Baal worship, and the Antichrist indeed present a complex and contentious subject. While there exist theories that suggest a direct link, it's of paramount importance to approach these claims with a discerning mind, taking into account the wider historical and cultural contexts. By meticulously examining religious texts, delving into historical records, and considering scholarly interpretations, we can gain a more profound understanding of these captivating topics. It's through this rigorous exploration and open-minded inquiry that we can begin to unravel the complexities of these religious and historical narratives. We would like to express our gratitude for your participation in today's episode of Celestial Chronicles. Your presence and engagement are what make this journey of exploration and discovery possible. If you found this video enlightening and engaging, we kindly ask you to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more insightful and thought-provoking content. Remember to hit the notification bell to ensure you never miss an update from us. We highly value your thoughts and perspectives, so we encourage you to leave your comments and engage with us and the community. Your input helps enrich the discussion and broadens our collective understanding. Until our next episode, we urge you to stay curious and continue this journey of exploration with us. Keep delving into the mysteries of the universe, and remember, every question asked is a step towards greater knowledge. Thank you once again for joining us on Celestial Chronicles, and we look forward to our next exploration together.